Your Excellencies, Honorable Members, Fellow Kenyans, let me first take this opportunity to congratulate the team led by our Prime Cabinet Secretary and the two departments of Foreign Affairs and of Diaspora Affairs for what I have seen is a job very well done. Congratulations from us. And today we mark a significant milestone in the crucial process of reviewing and consolidating our foreign policy into a comprehensive document. This policy reflects our strategic responses to global imperatives at both bilateral and multilateral levels, defines the values and principles driving our responses, and articulates our objectives as a nation. This transformation is timely, coming at the expiry of the shelf life of our 2014 foreign policy document that had been developed again in a concerted effort the way this one has been. Our foreign policy must align with the dynamic realities of both domestic and the international environment. Kenya's pursuit of national economic transformation necessitates a forward-looking, robust, patriotic, and people-centered foreign policy that will attract investments and secure our country's rightful place on the global stage. At its core, Kenya's foreign policy is more than the management of relations with other nations. It's about shaping a destiny for present and future generations that aligns with our national interests. This policy therefore ensures that diplomatic engagements deliver tangible benefits to every Kenyan, unlocking the power of cooperation, the promise of partnerships, and the potential of a shared vision for a prosperous and interconnected future for our nation. The time has come to dismantle the barriers that have traditionally confined foreign affairs to the executive. Instead, we must adopt a comprehensive, inclusive, whole of government and all of society approach involving parliament, the judiciary, civil society, faith-based organizations, our young people, women, and also all other active stakeholders. At the same time, our foreign policy must provide a sound framework for effective strategies that serve our national objectives, priorities, and interests through diplomatic engagement. Let me say this, that each and every one of us, whether we are members of the judiciary, members of, the, members of parliament, members of civil society, whether we are sportsmen, whether we are business people, we represent Kenya in engagements with others. And therefore, we have a diplomatic responsibility to represent our country well. Its ultimate aim, naturally, is to improve citizen welfare, drive national progress, and contribute to shared regional and global prosperity. Globalization has driven intensive integration and interdependence, blurring the line between domestic and foreign policy. This makes it imperative to redefine and reestablish a distinct comprehensive foreign policy framework, and this is the exercise this ministry is engaged in. The new foreign policy document outlines clear objectives, identifies emerging trends, and proposes effective responses to global dynamics. It incorporates mechanisms for implementation, monitoring, and evaluation, ensuring that our diplomatic sector serves as a catalyst for Kenya's prosperity. Notably, it highlights opportunities in emerging fields, such as the digital diplomacy and climate diplomacy. As you all know, we 
progressively have raised Kenya's diplomatic profile. It is the reason why, for the first time in Nairobi, we held the first ever African Climate Summit in Nairobi. And I did it specifically because Nairobi is the environmental capital of the world. And we must lead in matters environmental diplomacy. It is the reason why our voice as a country is counted on by our African friends, by the global community, and we carry the weight of the fact that Kenya hosts the United Nations Environmental Program, and it is the reason why we have leveraged on it to raise the profile of our country and to make sure that Kenya plays in the right league. And I am looking forward to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs continuously managing that space in a manner that profiles Kenya positively. Without a doubt, economic diplomacy remains central to our foreign policy. Kenya's position as a regional financial hub backed by a strong banking sector and hosting the largest World Bank station outside Washington underscores its importance. Recent engagements including the African Development Bank and IDA summits have emphasized the critical role of the private sector, youth and civil society in economic diplomacy. When I was requested by the World Bank to host the IDA negotiations in Nairobi, when I was requested by the president of the Africa Development Bank to also host their summit in Nairobi, it demonstrated Kenya's new profile as a destination and as a voice for economic diplomacy. We must build on it, we must leverage on it, and whatever it is that we are doing, whether it is with the World Bank or the Africa Development Bank, must eventually accrue benefits to the people of Kenya. Our foreign policy must, therefore, advance the strategy of creating more and better trade and economic opportunities for industries and enterprises with a special focus on the empowerment of small and medium enterprises and the inclusion of marginalized groups such as young people, women, and persons living with disability. In so doing, our foreign policy dovetails with a bottom-up economic transformation agenda to benefit from this complementarity and alignment, it is time for us to imaginatively, in, to be imaginative in order to enhance the capacity and the efficacy of our missions abroad and promote, use them to promote trade and promote investment and position Kenya as appropriately as they can. Our nation's reputation as a dependable peace and security actor is a source of pride. Kenya has established strong credentials in the area of regional, pan-African, and global peace and security engagements and operations. Our long-standing tradition of effective peacemaking, peace building, and peacekeeping has defined us as a force of common good in our region in our continent and globally, and sustaining this positive legacy is an important strategic priority for us. I expect the ministry to continuously focus in this space. It is the reason why we are engaged in all the interventions now in South Sudan. We're also engaged in the main Sudan. We are engaged in Somalia. We've just come out of DRC, and the global community approached Kenya to take our place in Haiti. It was not 
because of any other reason. It was because Kenya has positioned itself as a country that understands peacemaking, peacekeeping, and peace diplomacy has been, over time, a place where Kenya excelled. And it is our intention, and I'm sure you will put into the finer detail of this uh, document on how Kenya can leverage on that space to make sure that we not only play our role, but we also profile our country positively. This is why, at the moment, Kenya is leading the UN-approved multinational security support mission in Haiti and mediating peace efforts in different parts of our region, including South Sudan, as I have said, Sudan, and across the region. We are determined to remain a peaceful nation, at peace with ourselves first, at peace with our neighbors, and also working with friends across the world. Under the Shirika Plan, which is another huge invention of Kenya, our innovative refugee program, we aim to transform camps into integrated settlements, setting a global standard for sustainable and affirmative humanitarian response. I had, for example, an engagement with the UN representative of Matas refugees, and they are working with other countries that have refugees, learning from Kenya how to integrate refugees and how people who have lived in a country for 30 years cannot continue to stay in camps, how we can integrate them into society and how we can use them as a force of good. And we are making huge strides in that space. I hope this policy document will capture the innovative measures we have taken with our refugees, use them to profile our country, use them for matters diplomacy so that we can contribute to the welfare of not just refugees in our country, but refugees living everywhere in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not new to climate diplomacy. Our country has a long and proud tradition of environmental diplomacy that dates back to our earliest years as a republic. By 1972 Copenhagen summit, our voice and stand with respect to ecological stewardship, biodiversity conservation, and environmental sustain sustainability was distinct and well-defined. We have sustained efforts to consolidate our role as a champion for conservation in the face of relentless global warming, which has ushered in unprecedented climate change. It has become imperative that we take a strong stand to promote urgent and effective climate action locally and globally. As chair of the Committee of African Heads of State on Climate Change, I had the honor, as I informed you earlier, of co-hosting the inaugural Africa Climate Summit in Nairobi, which produced the landmark Nairobi Declaration, a collective position of Africa's pathway to climate action, sustainable investment, and green industrialization. Kenya's role in shaping global climate conversation is a testament to our commitment and our dedication to matters climate. Kenya's engagement in global health diplomacy is also guided by lessons learned from COVID-19 pandemic and our commitment to enhancing inclusion and equity by promoting public and private investment to expand access to quality healthcare, address disparities, and strengthen domestic health systems while partnering to address pandemics and emerging public health challenges, not just in Kenya, not just in our region, but globally. As a national policy priority, Kenya is committed to sustaining its strong contribution to deepening regional integration through various initiatives, including the accelerated implementation of the East African Treaty and Protocols, as well as promoting the free movement of people, goods and services across borders. This commitment extends to our obligation under the common markets for Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA, 
the tripartite free trade agreement that again came into force this year in May after meeting the threshold and our efforts to actualize the Africa continental free trade area. To this end, we have adopted a visa-free policy and the Pan-African payment and settlement system to facilitate free movement and promote intra-Africa trade. Let me say this with clarity, that we have championed, we've taken the front line in making sure that Africa trades together, works together, and we ease movement within this continent. It is our voice and the recognition of Kenya's contribution in matters diplomacy around African integration that led the Africa Union in the 37th summit in Addis to ask Kenya to lead the way in reforming the Africa Union to make it a fit for purpose organization that can speak to the interests of Africa, the aspirations of the African people. And I want to promise you that I am putting together the report after meeting several stakeholders and in February I will be filing the first report to see how we can make the Africa Union a fit for purpose organization to drive our in integration, to, try to drive our um, investment and trade and to make sure that we position our continent as we position Kenya in the right trajectory as we look into the future. On continental leadership and governance, Kenya upholds the Africa Union's Constitutive Act, champions the Pan-African principle of developing and applying African solutions to African challenges, and vigorously promotes Africa's interests and positions in multilateral fora and on the global stage. As I have told you, as the current leader of the AU institutional reforms, we are committed to establishing a well-financed, assertive African Union capable of addressing the continent's challenges and advancing its strategic interests. Despite numerous challenges that have put multilateralism in a crisis, Kenya's commitment to multilateralism endures, and more than ever, we are now invested in strengthening it at both the regional and global level. In all these endeavors, our positions are firmly aligned with the founding principles and constitutive instruments of the Africa Union and the United Nations, while being guided by our national interest. As a member state and host country to major international institutions, including the UN, Kenya has a strong interest in championing for their further empowerment and reform. And that is why I have been in the forefront and we have been as a country in the forefront in championing the reform of international architecture, whether it is the UN, the UN Security Council, multilateral banks and financial institutions, because we need to make them fairer, we need to make them much more responsive, and Kenya has a stake because we host the only UN headquarters in the global south here in Nairobi and therefore our voice matters. We can speak authoritatively as a country on matters UN, on matters reform of the UN, on matters reform of the financial architecture of, 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 of the world we live in today because we have a first-hand experience on handling matters UN in Nairobi. And I am very proud that the UN headquarters in Nairobi is now going to be upgraded so that we can have better facilities to be able to deliver on the mandate that the UN facilities in Nairobi have been assigned. During the, U the recent UN General Assembly Summit of the Future, Kenya reaffirmed the need to reform multilateral organizations and restructure the global financial architecture as a key to ushering our people into a just inclusive, sustainable, and prosperous future. We firmly believe that the current financial system grossly underserves the deserving majority of the world's population 
and exacerbates economic crises and inequalities, with one in three developing countries at the risk of debt default. As a matter of policy, Kenya advocates for the establishment of a fairer and a more equitable financial system. And I'm very proud of the strides we have made. There was a time people did not want to listen. Now we have, we have, we have we've taken the turn and everybody now accepts that something must be done. I am happy that at the last, we are able to launch this foreign policy document, which celebrates our diplomatic achievements, analyzes current and emerging global dynamics, and also offers firm strategic guidance on the ways and means of undertaking successful initiatives. I've also seen its implementation requires collaboration across all arms of government. I commend the Office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary and the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs for their thorough, consultative, and inclusive manner in which they have undertaken their work and call upon all of us, all the stakeholders, both in private and public, as well as our local, regional, and international partners to collaborate with us and ensure the successful implementation of this policy. As we embrace this new foreign policy, let us remember that the future is not inherited. The future is created. Through the power of our patriotism, concerted effort, and the strategic framework provided by our foreign policy, we must aim to keep Kenya's flag flying high, to inspire pride and hope and symbolize Africa's true renaissance. Diplomacy is a field rooted in tradition and techniques that safeguard national interest while uplifting humanity, embodying Kenya's identity as a nation committed to peace, proudly African and dedicated to global prosperity. Guided by this policy framework, let us get to work in preparing our nation for the dynamic geopolitical landscape that is before us. This foreign policy offers an opportunity to rise and navigate the challenges of a complex world order with a lot of confidence and equally a lot of clarity. I am confident that the work that has been done by our team at Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs is a good document. We look forward to taking it through the necessary processes, both in cabinet, subsequently to parliament, and also putting together a session on paper that will also give fresh impetus to our foreign policy and expand its input to include that from our counties and all the other stakeholders that have been listed uh, by the document. I wish you the very best as we focus on this space that seeks to elevate our participation, our collaboration, and also our partnership with as many a field, whether it is a multilateral field, whether it is on bilateral engagements, and now we are being told there is one called plurilateral engagements, so that whole space and whatever uh, it contains, this document will help us navigate in that space. I will, um, we will in input when the document comes to cabinet, I am sure cabinet will also um, inform this document as has been informed by others so that we can end up at, with a document that is fit for not just the present, but also articulate with clarity the medium and the future that we all aspire to. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless our great country, Kenya. Asante Nisan. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And with your permission, Your Excellency, uh, allow me to invite the Kenya Policy Review Committee for a quick photograph. Let us kindly take our seats briefly. If we can kindly take our seats briefly, uh, let's have the Kenya Policy Review.